Welcome back to Charter with Dill, and I am your host, Dill. This previous weekend's box office saw only one new film open wide. However, that film set a lot of records. A few being setting the domestic record for highest October opening of all time, unadjusted for inflation, the second highest opening in fall box office season history, only behind 2017's It, and the fourth largest R-rated opening of all time, behind both Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool films and It. The Joaquin Phoenix starring Todd Phillips directed Joker opens atop this weekend's box office totaling at $96.2 million, which if you remember from last week, we were talking about whether or not Joker would even top Venom for the October record, but in reality, Joker obliterated Venom by making $16 million more. If we look at the highest October openings of all time, we see that the month is a good one for villains as the top three spots are all owned by a main character that is, for a lack of words, not a good guy. As I mentioned earlier, Joker submitted itself in the record books this previous weekend. First up, the October opening weekend record, Joker topped last year's Venom by $16 million. And third, also from last year, is the 2018 reboot of John Carpenter's Halloween with $76 million. Then we see a steep drop off with 2013's Gravity claiming the fourth spot with $55.7 million, edging out The Martian by a million dollars. In terms of the fall box office season history, Joker has the second largest opening domestically all time behind 2017's It. The first installment of the It franchise opened to a massive $123.4 million back in 2017. Then, looking at the top R-rated openings of all time, Joker finds itself in fourth behind both Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool films that opened to $132.4 million and $125.5 million respectively, and It finds itself ahead of Joker in third. Then, two more records the film has garnered so far is for lead actor and director. Joker marks a new high in terms of the domestic opening for its film star, Joaquin Phoenix, who beat his previous high of Signs that opened at $60 million back in 2002. Then for director Phillips, Joker is a new best for him as well, topping The Hangover Part 2's opening in 2011 of $85.9 million. Joker is off to a great start. And even though it has controversial buzz surrounding the film, I think that's helping to propel the film, and we'll see if this holds true in the future, to see if Joker can possibly overtake IT Chapter 2 for our top spot in the fall box office season. Stay tuned to that chart at the end of today's show. Going back to the domestic top 5, as mentioned, Joker opens big, claiming the top spot for the clown Vince of crime, bringing in $96.2 million, helping to raise the total box office sales week to week, increasing by 58%. Falling off the top of the mountain is Abominable, which dropped 42%, which is a great hold, but we tend to see children-targeted films hold well week to week. Downton Abbey also has a good hold, only falling 42% to earn $7.9 million in the Royals third week of release. The good word of mouth and the cinema score have helped propel the film to a great domestic run so far. Down in fourth is Hustlers, continuing to hold strong from week to week, dropping just 43% and earning $6.3 million. An interesting thing to see here is all three of those previously mentioned films have had great holds week to week to help improve their total domestic run and show that these films have legs. Then, rounding up our top five is a film that started off this show, It Chapter 2, dropping a fifth, earning just $5.3 million, but holds 48% of business from last week, a remarkable hold for a horror film this late in its run. Just outside the top five, once again, is the Renee Zellweger starring Judy, which doubled its theaters in weekend number two and saw a 57% increase in business, bringing the Oscar hopefuls total up to $9 million through two weeks. Keep an eye out for Judy at your local cinema and for charts for weeks to come, because good word of mouth about Zellweger's ability to portray the Hollywood icon Judy Garland has propelled her to the front of the Best Actress category at this year's Academy Awards. Transitioning to the fall box office, Pennywise and the Losers Club still hold our top spot grossing $202 million in just five weeks. Our movie of the day, Joker, debuts at number two earning $96.2 million and I personally believe it will overtake IT Chapter 2 before this list is said and done. Since Joker debuts so high, that means the rest of our films are going to fall down a spot, with Hustlers in third with $91.4 million after four weeks of release. Then our group of three that have spent all three weeks bunched together, starting with Downton Abbey, and fourth with $73.6 million comfortably ahead of our 5th place film Ad Astra. Ad Astra has grossed for $43.2 million, adding to its lead over the 6th place film Rambo Last Blood. After the opening weekend, 
Both films were within $100,000 of each other, but now see each other $4 million apart. In seventh, but looking to battle both of the duo of Brad Pitt and Space in Sylvester Stallone's fifth installment of his Rambo franchise is abominable, earning $37.7 million in only two weeks of release compared to the previous being in three weeks of release. Then, rounding up our fall box office report is The Goldfinch. Once again, a film with a large budget, a star-studded cast, and an Oscar-hopeful film failed to take flight and has only made $5.5 million through four weeks of release. Speaking of the fall box office, a few new films open wide this upcoming weekend, including a double dose of Will Smith in the action thriller Gemini Man in 3,500 theaters, the R-rated comedy Jexy opened in 2,300 theaters, and then in 3,800 theaters, the family animated film The Addams Family, which is aimed at the complete opposite demographic as Joker and the other two new releases. I'll be right back here next Wednesday instead of Tuesday because of fall break, but make sure to be right back here on Charting with Dill to see how Joker holds in its second week of release, with the mixed reception and all of the controversy. No matter how the film holds, Joker has almost already doubled its budget alone in just three days, as it was made for a reported $55 million. Keep up to date with all posts and news about the show and day-to-day -day updates through my Twitter, the underscore life of Dylan, and Facebook, Charting with Dill. Until next week, put on a happy face.